Shalom, shalom. First and foremost, I'd like to begin by giving all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Racha Kudash. Double honors to the elders and to the apostle of Great Millstone. And enough respect to the brothers out there pushing and spreading the gospel of Yahweh Bahashem Yashai uh, to the four corners of the world. Now, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashem I have this article here, which is entitled, How the United States and uh, Israel Can Forge Stability Through War. Right, strategic lessons from the Middle East. And I also have this one here. Oh. Let me see. Which is, let me just drag this. Right. This one here that's entitled, uh, Israel Can't Arm Itself with 30,000 Pounds of Bomb in Time Against Iran. Uh, so before we get into this, these articles, this is uh, Jeremiah chapter 50. So we're all aware of prophecy. This is Jeremiah chapter 50, starting from verse 35. It says, A sword is upon the Chaldeans, saith the Lord Yahweh, and upon the inhabitants of Babylon, and upon her princes, and upon her wise men. A sword is upon the liars, and they shall dote. A sword is upon her mighty men, yeah, her armies, and they shall be dismayed. A sword is upon their horses, and upon their chariots, and upon all the mingled people that are in the midst of her, and they shall become as a woman. A sword is upon her treasures, and they shall be robbed. A drought is upon her waters, and they shall be dried up, right, by way of the what, the missiles. For in the land of the griven images, uh, for it is a land of graven images, and they are mad upon the idols. Therefore the wild beasts of the desert, with the wild beasts of the islands, shall dwell there, and the owls shall dwell therein, and it shall be no more inhabited by it forever. Neither shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation. As God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah by way of fire, and the neighbor cities thereof, saith the Lord Yahweh, so shall no man abide there, Neither shall any son of man dwell therein. And behold, a people shall come from the north, a great nation, and many kings shall raise uh, shall be raised up from the from the coast of the earth. This goes in hand with Ezekiel the thirty eighth chapter. Salakia. Ezekiel chapter thirty eight. Uh, let me see. Right. Son of man, right, Ezekiel chapter 38, verse 14, it says, Therefore, son of man, prophesy and say unto God, Russia, thus saith the Lord God, In that day when my people of Israel shall dwell safely, shall thou not know it? And thou shalt come from thy place out of the north parts, thou and many people with thee, all of them riding upon horses, a great company, and a mighty army. They come from the northern place. And thou shalt come against my people of Israel as a cloud to cover the land, so they will go into the land, right? And I will bring thee against my land, that the heathens may know me. And I shall sanct and I shall be sanctified in thee, O God, before their eyes. And the most I being sanctified in Gog is by way of what these prophecies come into pass. Gog doing what the most high sets him out to be, and then the destruction of Gog and Magog when Yahushua comes in and he destroyed these armies over there. Right? Um so this uh the important part that I want to highlight is that what um they the scriptures God you know, says that they shall come from the north parts, and indeed they do, they will come from the northern parts. So let me go back to Jeremiah chapter 49. It says he shall send an, an army from the north, right? Let me get that right now. Oh, 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 it's like it. Yeah. Right, it says, Behold, Was it 50? Oh, Jeremiah chapter 50. If 
forgot the verse that I was in. So verse 41, with the destruction of Babylon, right? Verse 41 says, Behold, a people, which is Gog and Magog, shall come from the north, and a great nation, and many kings shall be raised up from the coast of the earth. And they shall hold the bow and the lance. They are cruel, and they will not show mercy. The bow and the lance is the missiles. Their voice shall roar like the sea, and they shall ride upon horses. Everyone put in array like a man to the battle every, against thee, O daughter of Babylon. Now, these, the, 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 you know, these horses and horsemen also go in hand in hand with Joel, the second chapter. Right? Um, a fire devoureth before them, which is the missiles, and behind them a flame burneth. The land is as the garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness. Yea, a none and none shall escape them. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses, and as horsemen, so shall they run. Like the noise of chariots on top of mountains shall they leap. Like the noise of a flame of fire, where I devour the stubble, as a strong people set in, in, set, uh, set in a battle array. Let's go back to... The book of Jeremiah, chapter 49, or oh, chapter 50, and 41. So it says, what? They shall what? They shall hold the bow and the lance, right? They are cruel. They will not show mercy. Their voices like the, uh, shall roar like the sea. They shall ride upon horses. Everyone put in array like a man to the battle against the O daughter of Babylon, because we know the Babylon goes down, will be destroyed by the thermal, uh, thermal nuclear missiles, right? The king of Babylon has heard a report of them, uh, and his hands waxed feeble. Anguish uh, took hold of him, and pangs of a woman as in travail. So all that shit the Babylon keeps talking, from the greatest of the greatest in Babylon, from the head to the insignificant man who is proud, and and, 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 and and exalt themselves in, in you know, the, the whole thing of being an American and America being the greatest, when the destruction come, the most I will turn them all into, in, in, into, into what, like a woman in travail, okay? That's how they're going to, they, they're going to understand the cost of wickedness. That's how the fear that comes upon them will be them when it's time for them to pay for their wickedness, all right? So, um, so it goes on to the destruction of Babylon, and then verse 45, it says what? Therefore hear ye the words, the counsel of the Lord, that he has taken against Babylon, right? And we are the obedient people that are hearing the counsel of the Lord, Yahweh. Whenever we go into the scriptures and we believe, right? We, we, you know, we study the scriptures, we edify one another, as, as the scripture says. We watch in videos, you know, we keep in watch. We have taken counsel of the Lord, Yahweh. And the counsel that he has taken against Babylon and his purposes, we understand his purposes. We understand, you know, his counsel. We understand, uh, uh, it says, uh, that he has purpose against the land of Chaldeans. Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. And the least of the flock of Babylon is Amalek, is the Israelis, right? They, these people are, you know, like partners in crime, you know? Here it is, you have Babylon you know, as great as it is, and these people least, they are the least of the flock. Of all the, of all the Edomite nations, Amalek is the least of them all. They are the weakest. They are the, the, the poorest. They are, I mean, you know, like they, they've been suffering a lot, okay? Like in terms of peace and in terms of respect, right? They are the least of the flock. That's why they need everything to be subsidized. That's why they need uh, you know, these nations to uh, send them weapons. Now, a backup for that will be this um, article right here, which is that Israel can't arm itself with 30,000 pounds of bomb in time against the Iranian, uh, against Iran. So this is an article that came up, right? Uh, it's on the Jerusalem Post. It was written by, let me see. Uh, the writer, right, is a national security and Holocaust studies um, uh, thesis uh, researcher, student at the University of Haifa. He specializes in modern warfare with an emphasis on air power and logistics. And I believe he is a small hat. Okay. So his whole thing is that 
you know, Israel has gotten himself itself in a jam, and so they need to borrow or at least lease American strategic bombers, planes that can carry bombs that weigh 30,000 pounds. That's the whole gist. That's what this whole article is about. All right. Uh, it says, uh, last week, Dr. Eric R. Um, Mando made a compelling argument for de deterring the Iranian regime through the use of large, large uh, of the largest bunker busters. Now, this guy right here, he's in Babylon. He's in, he's in, uh, he's a uh, part of the Senate, if I'm not mistaken, right? Let me see. Or well, at least he works for the Senate. Um, trying to... Okay, let's just go to the first link. It says what uh, Dr. Eric Mandel is the founder and the director of the what Middle Eastern M E right Political Information Network. It's all right here, and uh, it's a uh, that. MEPIN is a private Middle Eastern research analysis uh, read by members of Congress, their foreign uh, policy advisors, members of the, the the Neset, right? Journalists and organizations. So these are all Amaleks. They are lobbying the United States Congress, right? The, or like the, the, the United States, let me say it in, in general. They are lobbying them to what? Uh, to um, back them up in their efforts to exterminate people. And I have a video that I'm gonna share um, on my channel, and it talks about how these Amaleks, you know, a while back, these veterans, they did a lot of horrific things. They massacred whole people, you know, and there's also some Edomites out there that are actually justifying, you know, the they, they're justifying what Amalek is doing. Now the whole, they are the ones who came up with their how they can the definition of a terrorist. So, you know, you had this guy telling them, well, then how is Israel not a terrorist? But according to the definition of a terrorist, you know, this is it. This is what they're doing. They, they advertise their public execution like terrorists do. They kill civilians like terrorists do. I mean, there's no difference. So how come you are calling one side a terrorist and, and not calling the other side a terrorist? It doesn't make any sense. And the dude can't explain it. And this is Esau. That's why the scripture says, uh, to the wicked, what hast thou to declare, uh, you know, uh, uh, to, to declare my righteousness, so to speak. These men are not incapable of being righteous judges of the earth. And it's about time the Most High brought them down from that fucking pedestal that they're on. You know, it's about time that the Most High brought them to the ground and made them like the worms that they are. He says he regularly briefs members of Congress and their staffs about the current geopolitical situations in the Middle East and meets with members of the Israeli leaderships and the advisors. He is the Northeast co-chair of Stand With Us, an international organization dedicated to educating the public about Israel while fighting the BDS movement, which is the Boy Scout um, Divers and Sanctions against Israel. Okay, so, you know, he's really picked a side. And so this is the argument that he's making. He's making an argument so that America can give uh, Amalek the uh, the resources to utilize bombs that weigh 30,000 pounds, okay? So, it says, last week, Dr. Eric um, R. Mandel made a compelling argument for deterring the Iranian regime through the use of largest bunker busting. That's what the bomb does. It just, you know, you think a, bu a bunker is strong and can last... You drop this bomb on it or bust that bunker, right? It says, while I wholeheartedly agree with him, of course he would, right? Because he's a small hat. It says, I disagree with the methods of delivery from a technical standpoint. This is an important debate as Dr. Mandel must lobby for the most effective weapons that can be operational quickly, right? So they send their people in there to lobby, right? To, you know, coerce or, a, you know... Any, any way that they can, any kind of influence. And uh, I'm not even going to take threats off the table. Any way that they can to back up Amalek and all their wickedness. So it says, why is the 30,000 um, pound um, GBU-57 bomb important? It says, the GBU-57 would, in Dr. Mandel's words, 
slow their nuclear program because they want to bomb their energy sites. It says they want to slow their nuclear program, prevent a retaliatory ballistic missile attack on uh, Israel and de-escalate the conflict. If Israel can destroy the Iranian nuclear facilities, Iran may be much more hesitant to respond to the Israeli attack on Iranian soil or move towards weaponization and a complete and complete a functioning atomic bomb. Now, before we move on any further, you gotta right off the bat, you know that these men have it. They have every intention of of war. Here it is. Babylon is trying to tell him, you know, the whole world really is telling them, you need to chill the f out. You know, they, you, you're not the only people in the world who's gotten, you know, who's who's have to, had to go through a terrorist attack. But what you're doing ain't right. You you doing things. You you're being wild, and you need to restrain yourself. But they won't listen. So here's an article on that. You know, explaining their full, uh, I guess their their full intention, right? In this war, or at least them expressing themselves to be beyond, um, you know, the advice for restraining themselves. It says how the United States and Israel can forge stability through war. This is through again the Jerusalem Post, right? The JPost.com. That's them. So they write articles like this. So so, so he, people are seeing the war and saying, yo, there's a lot of things going on. Innocent people are dying. Children are dying, being bombed. Uh, civilians are being burnt alive. I'm telling you, they literally burnt people alive. You know? They go through... Um, they, they cross over occupied territory. And then they... What? They... they uh, I'm talking about civilians. They do everything that they can just to make, um, um, I guess, um, people that are living in Gaza's life miserable. And I mentioned it one time. One, one, one time it's like pouring cement down uh, a well. Water that they need to drink, they, they'll poison it. They'll ruin it. Food that, that, that are brought to them from humanitarian aids, they'll burn it. They'll destroy it. So they are really, they, they're really wild. And, and they're really... Uh, um, Yo, they're, they're doing all the things that are necessary to draw Babylon out. Out to where? Out to war. Out to a destruction. Out to a confrontation with the army that comes from the north. They're drawing Babylon out into the valley of Jehoshaphat. They're drawing Babylon out into a confrontation with... Uh, 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 um, well, they're drawing Babylon out to the point where they have to actually come out and use the nuclear weapons. So in every sense, they're drawing... Babylon out to their destruction. That's why it says what? A noise of the taking of Babylon. At the noise of the taking of, of, of Babylon, the earth is moved. In other words, when the missiles start to take effect, when they hidden, the earth will shake. And the cry is heard among the nations. And it's gonna because it's gonna be a, a, a horrible sight. Because the destruction of Babylon really will ruin the world. It'll, it'll, it's, it, that's why you're going to need the Israelites to come in there and set things up right. You're going to need Yahweh Shai. You're going to need people with spiritual power to, I guess, to reverse the pollution in the air. To reverse the radiation in the air that can simply kill people. To restore the oceans that have been poisoned by World War III and nuclear, and, and nuclear warfare. You're going to need... The Israelites in power. It says, The United States and Israel are considering how today's war can lead to a more stable tomorrow. One of the most detrimental decisions that American uh, foreign policy strategists make regarding the Middle East is to begin their policy discussion by prioritizing how to exit and wind up kinetic actions and wind up, Salakia, wind up kinetic actions before we um, delineate our goals and define victory. And and you see how slick these fucking devils are in, you know, um, saying genocide. De you know, we delineate our goal and define victory. In other words, now there is no enemy to fight. You can only define victory if your enemies are decimated, are nowhere to be found, if you've, if you've completely destroyed them all. And that's what these people want. It's just focusing on false timelines instead of victories come into play in America's um, policy prescription for Israel. 
What's what's wrong with uh, going for peace? Especially now that Israel is finally turning the tide of war in its favor. The Biden administration's pre uh, preoccupation with the duration of war, one year in the case of the latest one, leads to counterproductive recommendations for immediate ceasefire. How is that counterproductive? You know, and diplomatic solutions before achieving compelling diplomatic and tactical advantage. See, these men want to destroy some people and beat them to a pulp before they start uh, negotiation. But negotiation is not like that. It's you have to, it's not just seeking to receive something you want, but it's also willing to sacrifice something. That's negotiation. So, so when we come out here and people say, yo, why you guys have so much hate? Well, look at this devil here. Look at the amount of hate that he has. Look at the indignation that's that's brewing in him right now. His drive for revenge. And it's righteous to some people. But when we, we come out here we, and we preach to you about an idea, you know, a, a common idea of revenge and justice, people have a problem with that. All of a sudden, we're, we're, we're you know, we're hostile, we're, we're angry. And yada yada yada. So they call ceasefires counterproductive recommendations. They ain't trying to listen to that. They don't even want to be in the meetings. They don't even want to hear peace. They just want people cheering them on while they kill as many people as they can, as they can get their hands on. It's just when you are and another thing too, what's all this this bullshit that they have about rape? I mean, every time you hear an Amalek talking, it's about rape, rape, rape. But they want to call us rapists. These Israelis are out there talking about raping little boys and stuff, little girls. I'm talking about pre like babies, children. But they'll come up here and say that Israel, the, the, you know, GMS are rapists. They'll come out here and call the Hebrew Israelites rapists. But these men are actually doing it. You say something, they say anti-Semitic. And I won't be surprised if they take down this video because I'm saying the Israelis. It says, when you are only focused on a timeline for getting uh, historical context, you demand, cease, uh, you demand ceasefires and, diplomat and diplomatic solutions, but forget that Hamas violated a truce on October 7th. When the, Bi when the administration pleads with Israel to accept a, a hasty diplomatic solution with Hezbollah, it overlooks the one in place for 18 years since the 2006 Second Lebanon War. Hezbollah, which effectively controls Le Lebanon, uh, was required by the international community to accept the United States Security Council Resolution 1701, demanding the disarmament of the terror force operating in a foreign country, in a sovereign country, and mandating, and mandating a withdrawal 30 kilometers from the internationally recognized blue line separating Lebanon from Israel. The, the, and the funny thing is, here they still mention someone else's, but they, they won't admit that they have their own people straight up invading other pe other other people's territories and setting up homes and lands and then proceeding to go out of the, the place where they don't belong and kicking people out and beating people up so this article pretty much talks about the intentions um let's go into them trying to lobby weapons from the united states um So it says the uh, so they ask they're they're asking for the GB fifty seven bomb right and it weighs thirty thousand pounds so they're asking for bombers that you know planes that can send these bombers up it says the GBU fifty seven would in Dr Mandrus would slow their nuclear program prevent a retaliatory ballistic missile attack on Israel and de-escalate the conflict if Israel can destroy the Iranian nuclear facilities Iran may be much more hesitant to respond to the Israeli attack on Iranian soil. Or move towards weaponization and complete a functional atomic bomb. How can these men look themselves to be the good guys? You know, at least, you know, you wanna, you wanna, uh, carry out military operations on some on, on Iranian soil, dropping bombs, and you don't expect them to retaliate. And then you go and tell someone else to give you more weapons so you can destroy someone, so they can't retaliate when you bomb when you when you do bombings on their soil. Dr. Mandrill article claimed that the F-151 Ram would theoretically undergo retrofitting to carry 30,000-pound bombs, 
While the bomb does fit size-wise, there are several engineering roadblocks. The Ram would need structural modifications as its payload is 23,000 pounds in um, at least three hard points. The fuel capacity would be reduced by two-thirds as external fuel tanks would have to be omitted. Since the, one, since, since the F-151 cannot reach Iran, Iran without aerial refueling, the vulnerable tanker would likely have to cross into Iranian airspace. So they're running into, into all kinds of trouble. You know, the, weapon, the, the, the kind of planes that they have right now can carry bombs only up to 23,000 uh, pounds. And even in that, they have to what, reduce fueling by two-thirds. And when they go into the territory to drop the bombs, they would have to sacrifice more planes, right, to cross into our Iranian airspace and provide extra fuel. So it says the recently introduced F-151A 150, has increased payload of 29,500 pounds, but it but is spread out throughout the airframe. A structural modification and range a structural modification, uh, modifications and range and aerodynamic issues would be time consuming. The center of mass would shift, adding a whole set of issues so, to be solved. So the plane that's close enough to carry thirty to carry thirty thousand bombs is what is the, it just needs uh, what it's called? Uh, what do you say? It needs what uh, modifications because what it's not flying right. It won't fly right under under. Um, the, under battle conditions, it says, "Why can't the Israeli Air Force deliver thirty thousand pounds of bomb? Uh, the Israeli lack the methods of delivering a bomb larger than five thousand pounds. The United the Air Force strike capabilities are centered around tactical multi-role fighters such as the F-15 and F-16, with no strategic bombers such as the supersonic uh, B-1B Lancer or the stealthy B-2 Spirit." The reasoning behind such a procurement strategy has twofold. Israel did not need the range of these uh, aircraft and associated weight and complexity. So up, up until this point, they didn't have to really go all out. So they was pretty much settled with what, um, you know, planes that can only carry 5,000 pounds, bombs that weigh 5,000 pounds. The benefits of F-15s and F-16s is that after dropping their payload, they are nimble fighters. They can also be used in air superiority configuration to escort a strike package into enemy territory. The B-1B, B-2, and B-52 bombers are the only aircraft in the Western inventory with the capacity to carry 30,000 uh, pounds GBU-57. Additionally, it can strike Iranian, Iran without air refueling. They are designed to penetrate Soviet air defenses and go after hardened and mobile targets such as road-based ballistic missiles, something that Israel might eventually need to do uh, against the Iranian regime. Um, so the methods, the, the issues that they're they are, they are running into, the B-52 lacks either the supersonic knee speed of the B-1B or the low observability of the B-2. The mothballs unit will take a long time to get operational, although they could benefit from Israeli electronic warfare suits. Training is an issue, as it will take months in a best-case scenario to be flown by Israeli crews and potentially years to have the level of proficiency currently displayed by them. Even if the United States authorized such a sale, it would require congressional approval, instantly giving Iran the incentive to test its first nuclear device to alert Israel of the consequences of an attack, and at the same time, they would fit nuclear warhead. They will fit nuclear warhead on all their remaining ICBM. Whoa! This is it. This is how you know. You know, I am come to set uh, fire upon the earth, and what will I? Oh, how I wish it was kindled! This is the works of Yahweh Bashim Yashai, so that the people may know that it is God that ruleth in the kingdom of men. What does it say? Um, let me get it right now. Uh, that was it right there that I want to bring out. Right, there it is. Jeremiah chapter 50. <laughs> um, 
verse 25. Let me just hit verse 25. It says, the Lord has opened his army. And this is what we're seeing, you know? And there, there are too many moving parts. And it seems like anything that Esau does only escalates the situation into where nuclear missiles get involved. No one is backing down. Let The scripture says that let the weak say I am strong. There's no one backing down. Ain't nobody out there, you know, still fucking, you know, looking to the white man and thinking, oh, man, I can't do what he's doing. Everyone has nuclear weapons now, or at least the people who have hatred for American. They have nuclear weapons. If they don't, their allies do. And their allies are willing to set up a base in their country, you know, to send a message. All the things that they're doing there will certainly cause, will, it will, the, 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 the Soviet Union, the USSR will be revived. And when it is, I'm telling you, this, as the scripture says, the, uh, the NATO uh, and the EU, right, will join, they will join Russia's side. America is losing its charm. The witchcraft, you know, back in the days where America can pretty much convince the whole world that they are the good guys and they need everyone's support, now that they've lost that charm. They can't play that shit, you know, they can't play that card anymore. No one reads... Yeah, the New the New York Times and the Washington Post. If they read it, they read it to scrutinize it. So it says what? Um, matter of fact, I'm gonna go up. Right, it says, how is the hammer of the whole earth cut asunder? Now they don't have that intimidation. They say, oh, don't get me wrong, America is still powerful. They are powerful. But what it took to subject a nation is, I guess it's, it's insignificant. And, and people are not scared of it anymore than it would be, you know, than, than it was back then. So, like, it would take a few things here and there to kind of crumble a nation, to, to, to you know, uh, or topple a regime. Now that shit don't work no more. The whole hum, uh, uh, hammer is what? It's cut asunder and broken. Now people are uh, uh, overtly speaking about Babylon's... I'm talking about politicians, prime ministers. Pretty much saying that, yo, Babylon is done away with... You know, people are literally changing sides. Second-guessing themselves. Saying that America is not reliable... How is Babylon become a desolation among the nations? I have laid a snare for thee, and thou art also taken. What was the snare that he had about Shemeshai set for Babylon? The snare that what he set up, uh, he gave the Israelites into his hands, and what he did, you know, you know, he made war against the saint and prevailed. That was a snare unto them. Now, they are done. The measure of extent given unto them is done. You know, that time, <laughs> times and half a time, that 42 months, that 1,260 days, it's up. That was a snare. And thou art taken, and they caught him. You know, Most High set this, these people up, and they caught him. Caught him good. Now, the battle is closing in on all sides, and Babylon is against a corner. And thou was not aware. Thou art, that's why the scripture says that thou consider not the latter end. They whose... Um, portion uh, they whose lot was not drink of the cup of wrath are surely drunken of it and now thou he that should go on together unpunished you were they are unaware understand ye brutish among the nation a brutish person is stupid they are not aware thou art found and also caught because thou hast striven against the Lord Yahweh you deal with the Lord's people they that touch the Lord you know the apple of his eye you know, you mess with the Israelites. And it's time for the Most High to avenge himself because you have striven with him. You have blasphemed him. You've crucified the Hawashai over and over again. You you have magnified yourself beyond the throne of God. The Lord has opened his army. Now the Most High like, okay, now nah, this, this guy, he can't go any further. And has brought forth the weapons of his indignation. The ICBMs. Let me read that again. Even if the United States... Oh, man. All right, let's go. It says, even if the United States authorized such a sale, it will require congressional approval 
instantly given Iran the incentive to test its first nuclear device to alert Israel of the consequences of an attack. And at the same time, they would fit nuclear warheads on all their remaining ICBMs. They will fit nuclear weapons on all their remaining ICBMs. And it, it seems like that's, that's, how, that's, if that's how it is. That's how it is. You know, let me hit that one more time. The Lord has opened his armory and has brought forth the weapons of his indignation. And for this is the work of the Lord Yahweh God of hosts in the land of the Chaldeans. Come up against her from the utmost borders, open her storehouses, cast her up as heaps, and destroy her utterly, and then, and let nothing of her be left. Let's go back. Let's finish it on Ezekiel 38. Right. It says, while well, I turn thee back and put hooks in thy jaws. It's talking about uh, Russia, right? The most I will, will, will turn them back to that, you know, conquering mindset that they were in when they set up the USSR. And I will bring thee back because they're trying to change their ways and move forward. But nah, you know, the most I don't want that. He don't want you to grow. He doesn't want you to modernize. He wants you to be in that, in that you know, animalistic mindset that you were in. That cruelty. I will put, I will, I will turn thee back and put hooks in thy jaws. So like, I want to highlight it, but my phone is messing up right now. I will bring thee forth and all thine army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shield, all of them handling swords. Persia, right? Iran, Ethiopia, and Libya with them, all of them with shields and helmets. Goma and all his bands, right? Turkey, the house of Togomar of the northern of the north quarters, and all his bands, and many people with thee. Be thou prepared, and all thy company that are assembled unto thee, and be thou a guard unto them. This is the word of the Lord. That's what we look forward to, man. Hey, Trump won. This man, Lord willing, the most I put the spirit upon him to start some shit. And he even he believes in prophecy. He knows that once once the armies go into the Middle East and start fighting each other, and the war is done. He, he knows that. You know? So Lord willing, the most I put the spirit upon him to do it. And uh yeah, yeah. So with that, I'm gonna end right there. Shalom, Yahabash Mashah Brakatham to Lord Akims and Aquifs to listening in truth and sincerity. And uh, may the you know may the most side deliver us when when you know things pop off, you know. So uh, with that, I'm gonna end it by giving all praise and glory to Yahweh. Bahashem Yahusha, Bahashem Rukhakadash. Shalom. Until next time.